All right, there's one very good reason why you would buy a Focus RS. to do what you would consider a drift, right? But that was just second gear, 60 kilometers an hour, foot down, drift mode allows the car to rotate, comes around, get on the throttle. That's like, just so fun. It's just so fun. So, the Focus RS, for me anyway, is the benchmark in this class. It is indeed very electronic, and actually sustaining a clean drift without the computers interrupting isn't as easy as you would think, but the fact remains that it still feels rear-wheel drive. It's also monstrously fast. I reviewed it last year against a Golf R, which I do like but found a bit boring on the track. Now Colin has set lap times in the RS and the Golf R, so other than the drag race you'll see in a minute with the RS, I'm going to divert my attention to these two the Honda Civic Type R and the Subaru WRX STI. So, the Type R, it's so hot right now. Seriously, there's a lot of hype surrounding this car because for the first time, it's available in North America. Well, I say available because even if you have the over $40,000 Canadian it costs, it's not exactly easy to get one. And if you can, dealers seem to be marking them up huge. So what's it all about? Well, for starters, it looks a bit ridiculous. However, Honda says that most of those crazy body shapes in that big wing are quite functional. In fact, on the roof, there's a vortex generator to help that rear wing produce more downforce. But I'm betting that those fake vents in the rear are, well, fake. Now what isn't fake though is the performance, 306 horsepower from a 4 cylinder turbo with VTEC that makes 295 pound feet of torque way down low in the rev range. Triple center exhaust in the rear, a limited slip differential up front, and 245 with tires make it look like it's ready to tear up some tarmac. Here's the thing though, it's front wheel drive. And with all the all wheel drive options around today, you can't help but wonder how will it stack up. So what do we have it up against? Well, your $40,000 can also get you a WRX STI, which has exactly one less horsepower than the Type R at 305, and it makes nearly the same amount of torque, but you do have to run up the gear to find it. However, it does have all-wheel drive with an adjustable center differential. This particular STI was donated by the STI Bros, hence the obligatory red mud flaps and a louder exhaust. So with both of these here at Toronto Motorsports Park and the RS on hand, obviously, we're gonna have a drag race. <laughs> On the left is the Ford Focus RS, 350 horsepower, all-wheel drive, and launch control. In the middle is the STI, 305 horsepower, no launch control, but it has all-wheel drive, so it should get off the line just behind the RS. The Type R is 306 horsepower and is only front-wheel drive, but it weighs over 300 pounds less than the others. Jay Sang grabbed the RS, I took the STI, and my racing driver Colin Casey, who will be setting lap times in these later, chose the Type R. All right, let's do this. All right. You ready? The RS killed them right away. The real race was between the STI and the Type R. Come on, come on, all the type R! And there's the finish line. Oh, that was close. Oh, man. Yo, who won? Who won? I did. No, you didn't. Did. No way. Um, yes way. That was a good race. And it was pretty much exactly how we thought it would. The, uh, the RS has just smoked them completely, right? And. The STI got off the line, good launch. Type R was last off the line because of front wheel drive, and then it just eventually walked past me. It's lighter and it's faster. That's fair. It's exactly what we expected. I was already in the STI, so I took it out for a shakedown on the track. All right, there are a couple good reasons why you buy an STI over a WRX, and they go like this. Number one, the steering is better. The rack is quicker. That makes this a more engaging car to drive. Number two, the transmission is different, which means the ratios are closer. 
In the new WRX, there is a ton of rev hang, and it is absolutely killer. It drives me nuts. It drives me absolutely nuts. I hate rev hang, and this does not have that, okay? So that right there is the main reason that I would buy an STI, to be perfectly honest. Now, to really experience an STI, as much as I hate to say it, I shouldn't be on a track. I should be on a loose surface because there it's a totally different monster. So what is it like to drive on the track, right? It feels flat in the corners. The suspension is just stiff enough that it feels sporty and the steering is good, okay? The STI has hydraulic power steering so it communicates more than many modern cars which makes it feel old in a good way. The powertrain, however, is a different story. In the straights on the track, it's peaky. All right, when you're in boost, use the transmission, keep it in the, yeah, keep it in the rev range and it's quick. This is a fast car. The STI's powertrain is enjoyable on the track, yes, but on the road, not so much. The way that the engine's set up, the new WRX is a twin scroll turbo. This is still an older setup. This flat four with this turbo has been around for, let's be honest, too long. This is an aging platform. Subaru needs to refresh this engine very badly. There's an advantage to using this turbo in the STI motor over the twin scroll that you get in the regular WRX. I know that there is, but I think we need some more modern tech in this car because out on the road, this feels doesn't feel like a fast car. Out here, it actually does. It feels very, very quick. So the question is, can I play around with this car at all? I've got sport sharp, traction control completely off. All right, let's put C-diff in manual. I've got everything shunted to the rear now. All right, here's the advantage of an STI, is that I have control over my differentials. I've got LSDs all over the place underneath this car, and I can actually control them electronically. That's good stuff. That's race car stuff. All right, under throttle, it kind of understeers, and there's really no two ways about that. The RS will power oversteer. It will power oversteer, even though it's all-wheel drive, because it sends more power to the rear. This doesn't send as much power to the rear. All right, so I end up with just understeer. Yeah, on the track, it just understeers. I don't like that. But what we will do is we'll experiment with a little bit of a different method. So I'm gonna toss it into the corner and see if I can get any motion out of the chassis. No, it just understeers. It's a fun car though. Makes a good noise. I like the torque. I like the ratios. The transmission is my favorite part of this car because you feel like you're in a race car because it just kind of like, he's kind of bang through the gears. A car like this to be a track car needs to have an alignment and maybe some different sway bar setups or a stiffer spring rate in the rear maybe because it just doesn't feel as, as playful as the RS. All right, under power, 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 power. No, there's no power oversteer whatsoever. One thing I do have though, is traction coming out of the corners because of the all-wheel drive. I've got the diff set all the way to the rear right now, and when I do get the power down, I get a little bit of understeer, yes, at the limit, but I'm still building speed, okay, which is good for lap times. So when Colin sets his lap time in this, there's gonna be a couple corners here where the STI is just going to get going out of the corner quicker, and it might make up a little bit of time. I need to make something very clear, though. I'm having a good time driving this car out here. 100%. I like it. It's a fun car. I'm always game to drive an STI. The STI was as good as ever. No better, no worse. So I hustled back to the pits because I was dying to drive the Type R. Alright, the Type R. Right away, I actually really like the interior of this car. It's just well designed. I like the digital readout. The it, it, you know, there's Alcantara. It says Type R right here. I really do like the seats. They're really well bolstered and actually incredibly comfortable. The bolsters don't dig into my legs. They're actually wide enough for a normal human. All right, now the first thing you notice driving a Type R, I'm in R mode, by the way, is the steering. The weight is much, much, much better than your average car, especially nowadays. Oh yeah, tons of weight. Steering ratio is fast. All right, so we're in R mode. That stiffens everything up a little bit. And it also does something that I dis disagree with is it turns on the auto rev match feature. No, thank you. I will do it myself. I actually had to go into the menu through like four menus and select driver aids and then turn off auto rev match in R mode. So we're in R mode with the traction control completely off. 
This is this car at its purest. R plus mode stiffens up the steering and it stiffens up the dampers and I found it to be bordering on too stiff for a track like this. The, the pedals aren't as well spaced as the STIs for heel towing, just notice that. All right, let's talk about the engine a little bit. We have a VTEC turbo. That kind of seems like a little bit of redundancy, doesn't it? VTEC was always supposed to kind of be the the natural turbo by valve timing. There's no doubt the Type R feels fast, and because of the turbo, you have access to the torque way down in the rev range, so you don't need to run it right to the red line to put the power down, but that doesn't mean that you won't still want to. Kind of has that like insane, like tapping off the rev limiter feel. Listen. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, this is this is a good car. Oh my god. Uh-oh. Front wheel drive is back in the fight. Alright, so you just turn in and then you just kind of like back off the throttle a little bit and it tucks the nose in. It feels balanced. This is a very good car. Turbo lag is there, but it's minimal. It still encourages you to rev it right out. It kind of hits you. VTEC and turbo comes in and just punches you back into the seat. Like the shifter is, as expected, very Honda-like. Snappy, short, positive throw into the gear. Absolutely excellent. So you can get it a little bit bent out of shape, but not really as much as the RS, right? You can't turn in in drift mode and power oversteer. So it is lacking that, unfortunately. All right, so if you are getting a car for just hooning around and sliding and having fun at the track, this probably isn't the car for you. But if you're out here to just enjoy driving fast and setting good lap times, I don't, I don't want to say that I'd want this more than the RS, but I'm getting close. I'm on like lap three and I'm really, really enjoying myself. All right, so Colin decided to challenge me here. So he's obviously going to set out, as you know, and do hot laps in both of these cars to see which one's faster. But he put the timing gear in here and he's like, set a hot lap, see what you can do. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go and embarrass myself. All right, let's try and set a serious lap. Right up to seven. Oh, that's fun. 150, 160, 170 on the straights. All right, yeah, that's quick. It has a hard time getting its power down, but it does have a limited slip differential, so it is putting power to the wheel that has grip. All right, break, downshift, roll speed in. Oh, it rotates, there it goes. Heel toe into second. Looking for my apex, get on it, get on it. Oh, understeer, under power, there we go. Gotta be patient, still front wheel drive. Come on, turn it, there it is. When you really start to push it, you can feel that front wheel drive. All right, diving on the brakes, down second, late apex. Yeah, no, it turns. Just give it more steering angle and it starts to rotate. It's not very often you come across a street car that will do that. Get on the power. Rotates under brakes. Get on, get on, get on, get on, get on, get on. I need to be in second gear for that last corner. I wasn't expecting a good time with one lap, but I'd find out later, because at that time I was having too much fun to care. This is a quick car. This is a fun car. I don't think I've driven a, a fully front wheel drive car other than the Focus ST in a long time that I've been this okay with it being front wheel drive. And you know what? I don't think I'd want to make this an all wheel drive car. It would make it feel heavy. Right now it feels light and exciting and frantic. <laughs> this is a little bit of a game changer for the front wheel drive crowd. It's a good car. This is a good car.
So Thomas, what lap time did you do? I have no idea because your phone is stupid. I don't know how to turn it on. Here, make it turn on. Actually, my phone's intelligent. The difference is it actually- Apple Android products, Apple products, Apple products. Android. Apple products. So your best is a 128.8. That's terrible. Yeah. I know, right? Thomas, I you are very good on camera. <laughs> <laughs> if he beats me by five seconds, I will actually cry. Like I, I will, I will, tears will come down my face. I am hoping to do at least a 123. Oh, you hoping. better not do that. Okay. But, but I mean, that again, didn't I've push that done. hard. I can't say. It understeers a little bit coming out of the tight stuff. I could have kept making excuses all day, but Colin got bored of listening and took each car out to set his best time. He ran a ton of laps in both so he could get the best out of each of these cars. You were watching his best lap in each. For those of you that are just learning to drive on the track, pay attention to how smooth he is. You might learn something. So, a 123.76 for the Type R and a 125.65 for the STI. Here are the Focus RS and the Golf R times for you to compare. The Type R is in second place by only a few tenths. That is seriously impressive considering it's the only front wheel drive car out of this bunch. So the Type R was very close to the RS time, and it took the STI by a large margin. Why? Well, it comes down to the way they turn. Now before you all go talking about how this is rigged, I assure you that Colin doesn't care which is faster, he just drives both the best he possibly can. But the reality is, the STI had a very hard time getting turned through some of the corners. It simply doesn't rotate the same way as the Type R, even with the all-wheel drive. So Colin couldn't carry as much speed on corner entry or exit. The Type R is lighter, faster, and more responsive. End of story. Both of these cars were limited by their stock tires, and the Type R was surprisingly close to the RS, but you know what? The Type R felt much more pure on the track. Now the question is, between these two, which one would I take home at the end of the day? Well, even though the Type R's aggressive styling did grow on me a bit, I don't think it suits me. And since I live in Canada, and we get assaulted by snow every year, the STI is the better all-around car. But that doesn't mean that I still really wouldn't consider the Type R. The thing is, I know how good an STI can be with some modifications, so put it this way. If I wasn't allowed to mod my car, I'd take the Type R. But if I was, the STI.